So a private business owner refuses to bake a same-sex wedding cake because it violates his conscience, and now the couple is claiming they are victims of discrimination. <laughs> Seriously? She's an outspoken Christian mom who isn't afraid to confront the growing hostility against morality in America. In viral Facebook videos, Elizabeth Johnston, better known as the activist mommy, pushes back on issues ranging from abortion and attacks on religious freedom to the problem of gender confusion and the transgender movement. In 2017, her video blasting Teen Vogue for its article promoting deviant sexual practices brought awareness to many parents who had no idea that Teen Fashion Magazine was marketing that agenda to minors. In her new book, Not On My Watch, How to Win the Fight for Faith, Family, and Freedom, Johnston defends the timeless truths of God's Word, encourages other conservatives to leave their closets and boldly unite in fighting for our children, our morals, our freedom, and our culture. The book, ladies and gentlemen, is called Not On My Watch. It's fascinating. I think you'll find it intriguing, and it's available wherever books are sold. And Elizabeth Johnson is with us, the activist mommy. Good to see you. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Hey, listen, what happened in North Carolina? You bring that stuff out, and the Obama administration tried to force the same-sex bathrooms. And well, what was the whole uh, crux of that thing? Yeah, the transgender uh, directive, bathroom directive from Obama is actually kind of what rocketed me out of my church pew yeah. and onto the front lines of the battle. I was very concerned when I knew that, you know, grown men were going to be able to access the locker rooms, shower rooms, bathrooms of our little daughters. I no longer recognized my country. Well, what, what, what was he doing? What was the, uh, what uh, constitutional ground did he have to make, issue such a decree? He did not, and did. Uh, unfortunately, governors did not push back as strongly as they should have. They started with with rhetoric um, to to uh, push back against the tyrannical uh, decree that he made about these bathrooms, but he had no constitutional grounds. And uh, we're still dealing with the ramifications you, from that. You point out there was a security guard who arrested a man for going into a woman's uh, um, bathroom because she violated some right that he had under the Obama administration. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was the night that I was gripped with a fear that was truly uncommon to me. I, when I read that news story and realized that we are siding with mentally disturbed individuals mm -hmm. over, uh, you know, perfectly normal individuals who desire to be kept safe in their private places and they're safe, you know, safe in their spaces like bathrooms. I thought, um, you know, we, we truly have lost our way. Wrong is right and right is wrong. And, and we don't have to tolerate this. And so, you know, my book is filled with um, inspirational stories uh, sure. about uh, things that, that we have been able to do. We've, I'm just a simple mom uh, right. with 10 children, a homeschool mom. I'm a very ordinary individual, uh, don't have any law degree. I'm not a politician, not a doctor. And, um, you know, we've been able to shut down sex brothels and give Teen uh, Vogue a black eye they were unable to recover from, uh, fight pornographic sex ed, started a global movement to fight pornographic sex Did ed last about year. This pornographic sex ed, you pointed out they teach oral sex, anal sex, all this kind of horrible stuff in schools? It's still hard for me to even hear, hear those words uttered. Yes, sir. Uh, last year on April 23rd, we did sex ed sit out where in droves we sat out of the public schools because they are teaching gender bending pornographic sex ed. You're right. That is what they are teaching. And the kids are being taught to question their gender gender as young as five years old. This is not what we send our children to when school for. They, who, who is they? Who well, are you Actually, Planned Parenthood and Human Rights Campaign, two of the largest political lobbies in our nation, are in our public schools teaching these things. How, how pervasive is that? Extremely pervasive. But thanks to Sex Ed Sit Out and all that we have done to rally the parents and educate them on okay. this, parents are starting to uh, confront this in their schools and go to their administrators. You, you have a little kid, he's five or six years old. They're trying to tell him he, he's a girl or he should be a boy or he's a boy he should be a girl. Yeah, it's a perfectly normal, healthy option, they say. Uh, they are absolutely um, uh, wreaking confusion and havoc on this generation. 
They are uh, cultural, radical cultural Marxists who have every intention of changing the fabric of our nation and ensuring that our children do not hold our values. That is why I am a huge homeschool advocate mm -hmm. um, and would encourage all parents, if, if in any way possible, please bring your children home and educate them and keep them safe from these radical Marxists. You have a list of things in here that parents who do have children in public schools can do. What are some of the things they can do? You really, you really have read my book. Yeah, I'm impressed. I, I do that. I, I'm one of the few TV hosts who reads the books. <laughs> yes, I do. I do have a very practical list of advice in the book. If you are going to allow your children to be in the public schools, uh, at least I'd like to assist parents in keeping their children safe from these radical Marxists and ensuring that their children can grow up with their Christian values. You talk about uh, Planned Parenthood. I've, I've uh, crossed swords with... Margaret Sanger, that she read a, a monograph I read called Braiding the Thoroughbred. And tell me, I mean, she was the founder of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood gets a lot of money from the federal government, gets a lot of money from the states. Well, tell us what she believed. Yep, uh, Margaret Sanger was a racist and believed in Hitler-esque eugenics. She believed that uh, black people and Jews were weeds that, um, that needed to be disposed of. And that is why you see abortion clinics purposefully planted in, um, in minority neighborhoods, unfortunately. This issue of abortion is something that our black pastors should be front and center on. And that is why, Pat, we are organizing something huge right now. This Saturday, the day of mourning is being held across this nation. We are calling America to repent over the 46 years of bloodshed. We're asking Americans to wear black, mm -hmm. to not shop, to close down your businesses for the day, and to repent for the sin of abortion. You know the Benham brothers. Um, we, we have them speaking, black conservative David J. Harris will be speaking. We're holding a flagship, a huge flagship rally that's already sold out in Albany, New York, Pat, right in the epicenter of where uh, Governor Cuomo signed and celebrated that outrageous infanticide law. We're going to be right there in the convention center underneath the state house where they signed that law. And we are we are owning this sin. Even as God's people, if you've never committed an abortion, there's a sense in which we have been completely complicit, completely silent. We have not been the good Samaritan that we must be. And so we have to own this as God's people for allowing this bloodshed for 46 years. And we're going to get on our faces before God thousands of people and repent for the sin of what abortion. What they're doing now is not just abortion, it is partial birth, and it's even infanticide, isn't it? I mean, the children are born, if, 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 if a botched abortion and the child is born alive, they're supposed to kill it. Is that, are those laws prohibiting things like that? The, the real story here, th I think, is that as God's people, we're outraged over a baby that is being murdered at 40 weeks, yeah. but we have not grieved over the baby's that are being aborted at nine weeks gestation. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bigotry even amongst God's people against these younger babies. We're, we're not doing really anything to rescue these children. There's a discrimination against these babies based upon their age. And we're saying, no, you know what? We don't need less abortion. We need it to end altogether. We need no abortion, no child murder. And we are going to join together. If you'll go to day, if your viewers will go to dayofmourning.org, they will see that there are 24 cities now live streaming our event on the 23rd. And we, are, we want your audience to be a part of this great movement of God to repent over the sin of abortion. Uh, they have put out the lie that a mother that has a baby, she's doing something wrong, that she's contributing to of the overpopulation, and you pointed out uh, how many acres there are in this land. There's plenty of space for all yes. the children. Yes, the overpopulation is is uh, an obvious myth. My daughter and I were just commenting as we were traveling um, th th around the New York area how congested it was in the city of New York, but how you know so much of the rest of our nation is sure. is of course not congested and and uh, so uninhabited in many places. And yeah, this is part of the agenda again to uh, snuff out God's God's seed. Why do you think they embrace Islam so much? It, it, Islam is anti-feminist if there ever was anything. Yeah, it absolutely is. The hypocrisy on the left and the radical feminist agenda embracing women like Linda Sarsour, mm -hmm. uh, who advocates for Sharia law. 
Um, it is mind boggling. I think anything that uh, opposes Christianity and wants to snuff out Christianity mm -hmm. is something that the radical left wants to get behind. And we know, of course, uh, Islam wants to see the, the end of Christianity. You think we can win? Absolutely. <laughs> if we won't be bullied and if we won't fear the left and if we will allow God to, uh, to make us bold and courageous, we absolutely can win this fight. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, not on my watch. This is a tough book. Some of the things that are being taught in the schools will horrify you. And what Margaret Sanger wanted will horrify you even more. Black genocide is what she wanted. She wanted to do away with Southern uh, uh, Europeans. She wanted to do away with black people. She wanted to do away with the mentally defective. And she didn't learn from Hitler. Hitler learned from her. That's the thing you've got to remember. Mm. Wow. Tremendous. Thank you, Elizabeth. God bless you. Thank you so much. Keep it up, and our prayers are with you.